Hi everyone, it's Alan Prost again. And now I'm talking about proportional assist ventilation in part of the Module 4 and the RESP220 course. All right. So this is a pressure control mode and we allow continuous spontaneous ventilation, but it's adaptive to the patient's needs. All right. So it's another one of our advanced modes that some, um, you know, still a little bit experimental, but we do have mechanical ventilators with this mode available to us. So we're learning how to use it clinically in the hospitals. All right. So the idea behind proportional assist ventilation is that this mode is going to adjust depending on what the patient needs. So if the patient needs more assistance, the idea being that this mode will gear up and give them the assistance they need. All right. If they require less assistance, it'll gear down to allow them to spontaneously breathe with very little assistance. All right. It's a little bit more intelligent than just straight volume control or pressure support in that it's using some algorithms and some feedback from the patient to decide and how much to augment their spontaneous ventilation. All right. So its goal is to assist spontaneously breathing patients. All right. And even though it works very similar to pressure support, it's using a different mechanism to make the pressure support level variable depending on the patient's spontaneous efforts. All right. Unlike volume control, though, this particular mode is if the patient is making more inspiratory effort. So if they if they have high work of breathing and they're trying hard to breathe, this will actually increase the level of pressure support. All right. So if you have a patient who's like gasping, this will increase the pressure support to ultimately decrease their work of breathing. Where volume control was kind of the opposite. All right. So the harder the patient works, the more support the ventilator delivers. So it's a positive rather than a negative feedback situation we have with volume control. The less the patient works, the less support is provided. So if a patient's relaxed, comfortably breathing, getting good tidal volumes, the ventilator is smart enough to realize that their work of breathing is very, very low. All right. So they have a low work of breathing, so they don't require very much pressure support. Okay. So it's a positive feedback system in that the higher you, more you work, the more support you get. All right. And that's actually different than volume control. And it's much more intelligent. I think this mode has a lot of promise. All right. Based on the equation of motion, of motion in that increased work, more work by the muscles is going to give you more inspiratory support. All right. So how does it work? Well, it can, and it picks up the patient's inspiratory effort. All right. It's pressure limited, but it's proportionally targeted. In other words, the pressure limit varies depending on the patient's workload. And it has a few tricky ways of measuring that. And something called a P0.1 is one of them, where it measures the amount of inspiratory force generated by the patient. It's flow cycle, just like pressure support, because in fact, it is pressure support with an intelligent computer overriding system built into it. All right. Assistance can be in the form of proportional or flow that helps overcome the work of breathing of the patient. OK, so the ventilator can increase the delivered flow. All right. Or it can be managed by increasing the tidal volume being delivered to the patient. All right. To making sure that they get a, a, a preset tidal volume. But both of these are working intelligently so that it works by adjusting that pressure support level. All right. Could have a volume target with that or it could have a flow target with that. But it's using all of these sometimes together to decide how much pressure support level. And it depends on the manufacturer and how they're building these algorithms. And as you can imagine, the manufacturers are very careful and being very aggressive about building these different kinds of algorithms and what the ventilator is looking at. But the concept, generally speaking, is it's best suited for patients with abnormalities in their resistance and compliance. So they still have, for some reason, a high work of breathing. All right. We're hoping that this proportional assist is a mode that we can put them on to augment their inspiratory efforts. So they're still spontaneously breathing, but we can control the level of work of breathing. 
All right. So obviously, it's not going to work for a patient who's got an irregular respiratory drive. So somebody who's got CNS depression due to drugs or anything else or an injury is not going to be making any inspiratory effort. So like regular pressure support, this would not be the mode to use. All right. So it's very similar to pressure support, but it's more intelligent and it adapts. And that's the key word here. It adapts to the patient's inspiratory efforts. All right. Physiologically, though, the beauty of this mode is that one, the patient's going to be spontaneously breathing, all right, but we're still trying to mimic that so that the alveolar pressures are, that the patient is still doing some inspiratory work of breathing, all right. We're never going to be able to take over all of that work of breathing, but we can minimize it dramatically. And the key thing is, is we can decide on how much work of breathing we want that patient to do. Thus, it's physiologically similar to spontaneously breathing and, of course, very much like regular pressure support, but it's adaptive to the patient's needs. All right. Now, deciding what the patient needs can be quite a challenge. All right. The settings, well, depending on the specific manufacturer, they vary dramatically depending. Some places, you, the only thing you do is you set the amount of work you want the patient to do. So it could be something like you have a control that says 50%, or you can have this ramping control. There's actually quite a few different ways that manufacturers are controlling this mode. Generally speaking, we do set up a PEEP and FIO2 and, of course, a sensitivity. And then we've got this gain and many of the manufacturers are playing around with this where you can set different components depending if you want them to come over their elastins which is their basically their compliance right so do you have a patient has a compliance problem or is it a resistance problem that's causing most of the work of breathing often it's more the compliance problem but we have these controls that allow us to mimic either one so as this note down here below it states if the gain is set to 50% of elastins and 50% of resistance, the ventilator will provide half the work to overcome each of the forces of these. So in other words, right, the patient and the ventilator are doing 50-50. And of course, if the patient does nothing, the ventilator won't do anything. So the ventilator is going to try to do half the work of each breath if we set them at 50%. All right. Often there's a maximum here to say maybe 80% of the patient's work of breathing that can be overcome with the ventilator. So this mode is particularly useful for those patients that are have uh, an increased work of breathing and we're having a hard time deciding on how much we want work of breathing we want them to do. So with proportional assist ventilation, I can decide on whether to increase and then slowly decrease over say a period of time the amount of ventilatory support okay so that's kind of an interesting mode and we're still learning how to use this effectively and we're not even sure of which of the best algorithms that each manufacturer is uh, putting out and how that interacts with the patient often the input to make this feedback system work is measuring something like the p uh, 0 0.1 and that is the level of inspiratory force generated by the inspiratory flow of the patient so greater the force the greater the PD 0 0.1 the greater the um, augmentation that this mode would provide so that's is a, I, I agree a very brief introduction to this mode and it's something you really have to uh, play with in the lab and on your patients to decide which patient is most effective uh, for and what settings you should apply to the patient. This is where your patient assessment skills will become very useful to you. All right, and we're going to be looking at things like that accessory muscle use, respiratory rate, all those elements to help us decide on what level to set this mode up at. All right, and of course, we're going to be doing repeated blood gases. Thank you very much.